So to get the frequency, the, the, the standard deviation of a frequency distribution when we have this, uh, this data set right here as a group instead. Um, Okay, here's instructions on how to do it using the graphing calculator. And it's important to keep this order. Store the midpoints in L1. Actually, I'm gonna label them. L1. And store the frequencies in L2, all right? They, I know they look in a different order over here on the paper, but I put it, I put, uh, I put it like this on purpose so we need to be careful so we're extra careful about it all right so let's go to the graphing calculator and uh, second quit okay let me clear the history here and i'm gonna go stat edit and well i'm gonna go highlight l2 and just click on clear and then go down once with the arrow and it's gonna clear everything at once let me do the same on L1, clear, scroll down, and that's gonna empty our, our column. So let's put L1, which is gonna be the, the midpoint, that's gonna be two, and seven, 12, 17, and 22. The second column, L2, uh, it's going to be the frequencies, in this case, the number of cats for the difference for the different classes. That's 18, that's 21, 33, 17, and 5. Now, we need to be very careful when working with more than one uh, list at a time. We need to make sure that the number of entries in the two or, or even more lists as, is exactly the same, at least for this calculation. If you're missing one entry, the calculator won't be able to give us the, 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 the one bar stat. All right. So let's see. Uh, how do we go about this? Uh, well, we're, we're done. I'm going to that second quit. And well, let's go about stats once again. We're going to calculate one bar, one bar stats. So in this case, L2, well, actually, let me change this to uh, L1, second L1, because the list is L1 for the midpoints, and the frequency list is actually L2, second L2. And let's calculate. And that should give us a mean of 10.4 and the standard deviation of, well, in this case, we need to be careful to, because we need to determine whether this is a, a sample or, or a population. So let's go back to the context of the problem. Here it doesn't say anything about a sample. It's the weight of cats at a cat show. So it's all the cats. They're not telling us a sample of cats from a cat show. So it's so we're considering all the entire show as a population uh, of all the cats in there. All right. So we're going to use the corresponding symbols mu for the mean and sigma for the standard deviation. And well, the mean is 10.4. I'm going to talk about the rounding rule 10.4. And the standard deviation, which is the sigma one, that's going to be 5.66. Oh, no, 5.7. Okay, uh, and I'm going to have this recorded as well. The rounding rule in statistics, I'll ask for, as for now, when it comes to working with the mean and the standard deviation, uh, the, the rounding rule will be one decimal more than what we have. For example, notice in this case, we just have integers. That means how many, how many decimal places do we have? We have zero decimal places. That means when we perform the calculations, we add one. If for some reason we were working with numbers with, for example, 10, 53, 52, 0.33, 0.14, 0.65, if we had 
two decimal places to begin with. When we perform the calculations, we would represent the result with one more decimal place, that is with three decimal places. So that's going to be the, the rule. And well, the water we will be practicing this rule every every now and then, every time we create, we work on another example and so on. All right, I think this is... Uh